So I bought it as a scale model and then, uh, like usual, modified it, put some tape on the rear so it would drift a little. Um, and I've just been chasing the cat with it for the last couple of days. So <laughs> um, I'm going to take this out of the garage today with me while we go work on the 180SX and fine tune the rear over fenders and get that nice shape going. So I never thought there would be a day I could say I was happy to buy a sander. <laughs> so we got the sander as well as the sander. Also bought some spares, so just some paper. Um, these are medium, so these are 80 grit. I don't know why that's medium. Okay, proves how much I know about sanding. Apparently that's a medium. Alright, cool. So I've got a whole bunch of sandpaper here, and the sandpaper here ranges from 80 to 120 grit. So that's really, really rough, which is good, because that's what I need at the moment. Um, and I also went out and bought a 28 piece sanding kit, which, as you guys saw before, I do already have one of these. However, can't hurt to have more. Same with these. So, it came with a whole bunch of sandpaper as well. It comes with a hand sander, a sanding sponge, a sanding sponge, another sanding sponge. Um, one, two, three, four, four different types of sandpaper. And all sheets are 230 by 280 mil. Oh. I can read the catalog. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I will not bore you anymore. Let's head down to the garage and go see how all this stuff goes. How these work? If they work. If they're good for what we're doing. <laughs> Go, little Ferrari. Oh no, not the wall. The battery's almost dead. I can't believe I walked down. This is what I look like right now. <laughs> this is like carrying everything. I am kind of a little excited, I won't lie. Wow, I really like, I'm sorry. I really like where I live. I, I don't mean to, to brag or anything, but look at those mountains. It is so cool. I wish every day was like this. Uh, if you guys remember from the previous vlog, we had started to shape the rear over fender here. This is the basic shape that I started using, just using a handsaw and a piece of dead sandpaper. Where's my block? Here it is. I killed my sandpaper, so I couldn't do too much with this the other day. And I had to use that and a combination of my handsaw, which is this guy here, to get some form of basic shape going with the car. And the front won't be done until the front or until the whole car goes off for smash repairs. So I'm trying really hard with this car not to get too caught up or carried away with some of the designs and go retro and then modern. And as much as I really, really, really want to curve out some of these corners and, and kind of make the car a bit more uh, RX7 kind of rounded, I've got to keep reminding myself that I'm going for the retro car look and I have to make sure things stay rather boxy. I have to keep it pretty boxy to keep with that 80s, 90s aesthetic. So, we'll see how it turns out. I'm hopefully gonna get it to suit the car, um, but there's a lot of work still going. So if you're sitting there wondering, looks like crap, or oh, it looks horrible, it doesn't match yet, please don't judge me yet. Give me a bit of time, let me get it all together, and then go for it, flame all you like. Testing, one, two, three. Cheap 
sander. Um, <laughs> it's proven. This thing has come off like four or five times now. Seems the vibrations just go through it and the whole back. Just, I don't know why it's hard to get up now, but it came off like four times. So it's pretty gay. Um, and it doesn't clip in. You can see from the top here. It doesn't clip in too well and just keeps coming off and then putting stuff over so that and the fact that it's a bit too heavy duty for what i'm doing and i don't like the fact that it's trying to run away on me so i'm just going to go back to block sanding and go from there doo, doo, doo. let's go with this guy oh, i'm covered see this is why i'm wearing my socks like a retard i'm like absolutely covered Got some rough sandpaper. I am going to go for. Don't need anything too hectic at the moment, I suppose. Let's just do 80. Now, I have never used one of these before. How does this work? Mm, okay, cool. So it's like a paper clip. I'm getting it. <laughs> fold it down and then fold it out and then. Paper clip, okay, so it's like a glorified paper clip board. Sweet. Okay, right. now how do I put this on? Start with that. So if I cut it in half, I should be able to use both pieces of the thing and not have to cut off the top and the bottom. I'm new at this sanding thing, okay? <laughs> how to make a vlog on putting sandpaper on a block for 10 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see how this goes. Again, great success. Sorry, I'm keeping you guys at a bit of a distance just to save the camera. So I apologize if some of this is not too easy to see. So what I'm doing at the moment is making sure all this is nice and flat. See along there. Now you can see where that little sander has taken like a very slight kind of, not a chunk, but they've made it slightly uneven. Um, I did fix most of it before I took the sander off. It had a couple of little squares and stuff. But apart from that, it's fairly smooth, which is cool. Um, I want to sand this out and make this a bit more smoother. Sorry if you can't see it too much. Um, I want to get a nice sharp edge on here and clean it up a bit and make it the same on both sides. I gotta sand. Whoa. I gotta sand this down flat and angle it how I want. And you can see I've got a bit of a weird wave going on here, so I need to straighten all that up before I even think about shaping it properly. Um, and then shape this properly, clean it up, um, and then do the back. And hopefully I can maybe put a bit, a bit of a curve in this. I don't know if I'm going to curve it yet or not, or if I'll just leave it. Let's see if we can turn the brightness down for you. Oh, wrong way. Mm, still doesn't really show the shape too well, does it? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. Let's see how that goes. If you guys fall off, let me know. Just like yell and scream and stuff. So dusty. Whew. That didn't take too long. Hold on. Okay, so this is actually turning out really pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Clean you up. So this is what you guys just witnessed about five minutes worth of sanding. Uh, now keep in mind little bits like this, the bog might make it a little bit deceiving, but the shape of it 
is not too bad. I'm actually pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's getting there. I was worried that, you know, if I left it too square on the side here, that it would still look like a box. But after taking a couple of mils off the corners here and kind of rounding it down has really changed the whole look of it and made it look a lot more like a car and a lot less like me playing with it, the sandpaper. So what I do want to do, you guys could probably see it as well, this little bit of bog right here. I'm just going to try and flatten that out a bit more. Get this out of the way. Okay, I got sandpaper stuff everywhere. Okay, let's review the shape. So I'm liking the back. I do this thing where I put everything in my way. Okay, sorry. Let's look at the back. I think I'm pretty much digging that, eh? Don't worry about all this. This is probably going to go. I need to put some bog along here and then smooth this out. So I'll get rid of that. But I've just rounded it off a little. Just to add to the shape. So what I do need to do with this part here is I need to make a side skirt that's still going to come down probably another 10 mil. 10 mil? 100 mil, sorry. 100 mil, 10 centimeters, and then it'll still be 10 centimeters off the ground. So it's got still quite a long way that I can play with, so I might not need this. It was fun making though. But look at the shape of it. I was proud of myself. It's like, wow, I can actually make a sill looking thing that kind of looks like something you see on a factory car. I'm not going to be unrealistic and go, yeah, I'm going to make this the other side exactly the same because if that was the case, I would have had the, the other side 3D printed or, you know, I would have had it made by a computer, but I didn't. I'm making it by hand, so it's probably going to have a couple of little technicalities in it or, you know, a couple of little things that aren't exactly the same, but that's okay because at the end of the day, I can sit there and go, I made it with my hands, which is really cool. All right. So I've just finished sanding uh, most of what I'm happy with. Um, I've also just mounted up the rebar just a bit better so I can see where the rebar is going to set. Set. <laughs> where the rebar is going to sit. Um, the little part on the end there, so the rear apron, like the pod that sits behind the rear wheel uh, and joins onto the rear bar, that is the bit now that I'm going to work a little bit on. So this rebar is actually going to need quite a bit of fiberglassing and modification when it does go on the car. I've just lined up the bits on both sides here and you can see it's already overlapping uh, both sides of the little edge here. Don't actually clip onto the inside here. I've just finished cutting all this off as well. Um, I cut a good maybe pretty much an inch off that just to bring that right up and sit it where it needs to go. Um, regardless of where that's sitting, it's still, as you can see, doesn't sit correctly. It's up as high as it can be, but look at the big gap down the bottom here. But you can see like a massive gap here. So the bar itself, the mold or whatever they've made it on, uh, fiberglass, maybe they've made the bar too quickly and the fiberglass has sagged. Um, it's pretty common with most 180SX rear bars anyway, and it's quite disappointing. But it happens and at least I'm at the stage where I can actually fix that or I can mould something a little bit different or um, add a bit to it. Uh, this side again, so you can see it is lined up to where it should be sitting uh, if I did not have obnoxious amounts of foam sitting on the car. I've also done the same thing, cut this side. It's not hitting anything but it still again does not join up far enough to join onto the car here on both sides. So I'm assuming the mould that they've used for this is quite old and it's just not the same shape that it should be anymore. But that's okay. So what I do want to do is I'm going to get rid of this line. So this body line that's put into the bar, that's the factory body line off the car, it comes off just here as well. Um, I'm going to delete that completely so I'll fiberglass over that or bog over that and get rid of it. But that's not a problem for right now. What I need to do is figure out how I'm going to join all this together. So what I'm going to do now this side is completely untouched. Um, or maybe I'll go to the other side and show you. 
get a block so I can show you. So this side, you can see it's a bit rounded off here. And what I've done is I've started rounding it. That way it'll round off into the rear bar here. So what I need to do at the moment is cut off a big solid block of foam, stick it in here. It would help if I turned around that way, wouldn't it? You can see I've got to still trim it all down. Um, so stick a big rectangular block in here, get it down to about the same level as this one here, um, and kind of mold it in and around onto that rear bar there and up and over in the top here. Once I have some form of top part across here, I can cut out roughly where the tail light is going to sit, and then I'll be able to do a fiberglass coat over the top of this. Little bits like this, they don't matter too much because what you do with these is I'm um, going to grab some foam, I'm going to lay some foam in there, um, maybe even just masking tape it down. All it's got to do is have a pretty flat-ish surface because what I'm doing with this is I'm not creating a plug to then create my moulds. I'm just going to create the mould straight off the car and then once the mould is done, I'll pull the mould off and I'll destroy the foam and then stick the, the actual mould onto the car. So I've just cut another 34 mil, 34? 30 by 34, sorry. The other one was only 21. This is now 30 by 34. Um, and now this section here will go onto the back here. And you see this little curve I've put here that lines up with the curve just here. So that way I can then cut out the little section for the tail light just here and then worry about filling that in later and joining that onto the rear bar once the rear bar has been fixed to sit on the car nicely. to add a bit more of a flat looking door so it doesn't look so curved and not completely flat like that I was contemplating doing something like that but because of the shape of the door and the shape of the car and the lines on the rear it will look a bit dicky so I'll keep the rear flat and I'll twist this end here um, but when I do that I'll have it kind of like Okay, it's really hard to do one hand. Something like that. So it'll hold its shape at the back there and then it'll go kind of flat on the door. There. Aiming to get a lot done tonight. Hopefully I get most of it done. Um, I just want to get those blocks set, shape them up for tomorrow. Uh, and get those stuck onto the doors and we might not be able to shape the, the door tonight because the bog will still be drying but if I can at least set it on the car and be happy with it I can come back tomorrow. Um, so things, some of the things I've learned while doing this process um, have been never judge your work before you've started. Definitely don't ever do that. Um, I was a bit iffy about, I'm being totally honest here, I was a bit iffy about the rear over fender here at the first, first time I stuck it on. Not because it was a block, but because I didn't really know where to go with it and it was, it wasn't overwhelming, but I just needed to get in and just start. I just needed to start shaping it and then go from there. I could always build back on more material if I didn't like it or if I didn't think it was going to work out. So instead of just sitting there going, oh, it's a box, oh, I'm going to shape this, oh, I have to do this right the first time, I didn't really worry about that. I just kind of went at it and shaped something that I liked and then just worked with it from there and it's turned out really well. Although in saying that, now that I have a bit of a shape to the car, I feel kind of bad thinking about cutting it up and off the car and having it so it does the pod thing where it lifts up like this. As cool and as awesome as that would be and as much as I want to do it, I don't know yet if I can pull that off with what I want to do by putting in the side mounted radiators on the outside of the car or whether I just do the ducting on the outside of the car, go through the quarters and then run it to the back into the hatch and then have the exit through the back of the car and kind of cut a bit of that out. Or whether I'll go with the initial idea I had where I had the pods and I had the underneath of the car um, and I had the, the toolboxes underneath 
um, and have the, the radiator piping and then have it so the pod would come up, I could have the tools on the back of the car and what I could do was create a uh, foam layer with a perspex lid on top, LED light it all from underneath because we're going for the retro cyberpunk look. Um, but another thing I was also thinking of doing with the radiator underneath the pods is running clear radiator pipes. So I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, you can see it on, I think you can find it on uh, YouTube or just Google it. Have a look at clear radiator hoses. It looks really, really cool. Um, and it was not initially something that I was thinking of doing, but the more I'm thinking about this car and the more I'm thinking about the concept and my aim with it, the more it seems appropriate that I just do really stupid like that. So. <laughs> Um, I'm still not sure if I should just go ahead and do it anyway, um, but that's way down the track. So once I have the shape of the car down, I'll then decide whether or not I want to do the dual rear quarter radiators with the daisy chain of radiator piping that goes through and runs around the motor so it makes one big cycle, um, or whether or not I do the ducting through the rear quarters and then back out the rear hatch and then have the rear a certain section of the rear done as like a mesh which I have a friend that does 3D printing and laser etching and cutting and stuff so I can design myself up whatever pattern honeycomb for the venting that I'd like and then I can get him to cut that for me in that venting shape and size and style so I could potentially do some really really cool stuff with this and, and with some of these ideas it's just what I want to stick with and see through to the end now and pretty much deciding what I want to do so so many ideas <laughs> it's been a lot a lot of fun though and yeah no, I don't I don't regret a second of it I think it's been a great learning curve and even if at the end of the day I have to rip every single piece of foam panel off this and just maybe revert it back to a 180 which is highly unlikely but if I had to do that I still have the option to do that I haven't done anything to the car that's not reversible um, and I haven't molested or hacked out anything yet may have to hack something yet, not sure. It all depends on this cooling setup, I can't decide. So I hope if some of you guys are looking to do something like this for your cars as well, maybe not as extreme, maybe you just want to make your own fenders or make your own rear over fenders or even your own flares, um, I hope some of this comes in handy for you and maybe gives you some more options and is quite helpful um, in the process of how you can go about doing this yourself. Let's just continue and we'll see where we get to.